Benjamin was an accidental baby in someone's aquarium. He had what you would describe as like negative buoyancy. He would try to swim up and just sink right back down. He was stuck at the bottom of the tank. The x-rays showed that he actually didn't have a swim bladder at all. He was permanently disabled. How do you make life as good as possible for a disabled goldfish? Hi, my name is Gwendolyn. This is a story about fish for geobeats. We have about 20 aquariums inside, and then we have two ponds outside. We've, we've turned our home into a, you know, a fish rescue. Philip was the very first rescue. I was at the store looking at aquariums hidden away on the back of the shelf in the little cup. It was sad little Philip there with his fins rotted away and his body was so pale and he was super, super underweight. He was going to die if he stayed there. I took him to the manager. I asked if I could adopt him to try to help him survive. They said yes. I set up a 10 gallon tank with a heater and a filter and some plants and kind of panicked about it for a couple weeks and obsessed over him and worried and worried. He survived and recovered and has done fabulously. He's still around over two years later. We take in all sorts of different species. If we can give them a chance to recover and receive the medical care, I think that that's something worth doing. If five years ago someone was like, oh, you're gonna have a fish rescue, I'd be like, no, I'm not. Like, that sounds so outlandish. We have a really fabulous specialized aquatic veterinarian. The main reason that we are able to take in so many fish from stores or that so many people want to surrender their fish to us is just improper care. Sadly, there's so much misinformation about what constitutes proper care for these animals. I also had bettas in bowls growing up and I never thought much about it beyond that. Most of the fish stores allow us to adopt come in those horrible little cups. It's just the worst possible situation that these fish could be in. So it, of course, has these really terrible effects on their health and their appearance. Benjamin probably didn't get enough good nutrition or something happened during his early development that he didn't develop this organ. For quite a while, I would scoop him up into my hand and hand feed him floating food. Then one day we woke up and he had passed away overnight. Where Benjamin had the negative buoyancy and was at the bottom of the tank, Penny had positive buoyancy and was stuck up at the top of the water. So she would swim down and then just fly right back up to the top like a little cork. It was the stress of being in this little cup and not getting the greatest care. She was incredibly emaciated. All it took was putting her into a clean, warm tank and getting her small meals through each day so that she could slowly put on weight at a safe rate. She went from the kind of pale white to now she's like almost red. It's pretty remarkable. She has so much personality and she has a tentative home lined up. So she's probably going to be adopted in the next couple of weeks and go to a fabulous home. A lot of people think fish are, are boring, that they're just completely unfeeling. That's just not true. Fish feel pain, they're sentient and they have experiences. Living with these animals, it's so abundantly clear that that's the case. The first day that a fish arrives, they're afraid and they're nervous and they're stressed. And then over the first two or three days, they learn all of the fish are so excited when I specifically walk up to their tanks. They all know that it's me coming to feed them. Roy, who has since passed, he would come and actually sit on your hand. We have a goldfish named Goldie who loves to come up and nibble on your fingers and say hello. We have dry erase markers that we write onto the tanks with and the fish will follow the markers and check out what you've drawn. I would love to live in a world where fish aren't in tanks, but the reality is that releasing any of our fish is a guaranteed death sentence. Most of the species that we have and that we rescue are wildly unsuited to the area that we live in. Most people don't think a whole lot about fish, and so if I can help more people realize that these fish deserve this kind of consideration, it feels amazing.